Okay, we have here today something interesting from the UNSW integration, B2024, number seven. We have the limit as x approaches pi of two over x minus pi times the integral from pi to x of t cosine t over one plus c sine t dt. Okay, I thought this was really interesting because even though we do have an integral here, it's actually kind of more of a limit problem. And the limit, I think, is the thing we need to deal with first. So to get started with this for my first step, what I want to use is the fact, you know, we do have a fraction here and I can rewrite this and kind of bring the whole integral into the numerator. So doing it like that, we'll have our limit out front. Well, this limit's gonna be, we just have our limit from x to pi. And then let's write this as two times this integral. And this whole thing is gonna actually be over x minus pi. And then from here, what we can do is just try to informally kind of evaluate this limit when x is approaching pi. So if we do that first in the numerator, looking at this integral, what I can do is we can just look at this because that's our only x value, everything else is t. So if we just kind of plug in pi for x right there, we have this principle of an integral when the upper bound and the lower bound is the same, this whole thing is actually equal to zero. So for our numerator, we can basically consider this zero, but then doing the same thing in the denominator, think about when you evaluate x at pi, well again, our denominator is also going to zero. So what we have over here is actually an indeterminate form, and this is gonna be a good case to use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so we have our L'Hopital's rule over here to the right, and it just tells us when we have a rational expression, like with what we're dealing with here, what we can do is instead of taking the limit of the numerator divided by the denominator, we can actually evaluate this as the limit of the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. And before we can use this, we actually have the condition that needs to be an indeterminate form of just a couple types. It can be either this type of zero over zero, or it can be any variety of these infinity over infinity cases. So to do this, all we're gonna to need to do is get our derivative of our g of x, our denominator, which is this, and our f of x, which is gonna be this whole thing up here. But of course, this derivative is gonna be easy. This two isn't gonna bother us. The real issue is just taking a derivative of this thing. And what we're gonna need for this is just the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so we have our fundamental theorem of calculus part one over here to the right, and it's pretty straightforward. It just tells us when we have this situation here where we have our big F of X, which is the integral of this function F of T, just like our problem where notice our function inside here is in terms of T. Then when we take the derivative of this thing, what we end up with is just our function F of T, but evaluated at X. And this is really easy to see when you integrate this thing where F of, where the big F of X is actually the antiderivative of this. When you evaluate this, you end up with F evaluated at X minus F big F evaluated at A. But then when you take the derivative of this, this piece is just a constant. So this piece goes away, this piece is just zero, and you just end up with the derivative of F of X, which puts us back with this value F of X. So getting back to the problem we want to solve, we want to get the derivative of this. Now this here, this piece inside, this is going to be our F of T. So when we go ahead and take a derivative of this, we want to find our big F derivative of X and this is just gonna be f of x, so we just need to take f of t and plug in x. And so actually for all the confusion, this is really simple, because we just need to plug in x in here everywhere we see a t. So this is gonna become x cosine of t over one plus e sine of x. So all we need to do from here is just take this value, go back to our L'Hopital's rule and plug this in, because this is gonna be the derivative we need to finish that off. Okay, now continuing from where we left off with L'Hopital's rule, we already determined this is an indeterminate form, zero over zero. So we just need the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. Now for the denominator, this is gonna be easy to take the derivative, right? So the derivative of this, so the derivative of x minus pi, that's just gonna be one right here. And the derivative of this numerator, we already figured out on the previous board with basically this, but we have this two out front that we need. So we'll just bring over the two, and then we're just gonna have all this stuff. So this is gonna become x cosine x one plus e sine x. But then from here, we can just kind of get rid of this one because that doesn't do anything. And now just notice that this thing right here, this is no longer an indeterminate form. We've got no zeros in here. We're not going to infinity anywhere. So we can actually just calculate this. There's no problems here. So we can just actually plug in pi. So we can just plug in pi for x and see what we have. So evaluating this at pi, we're gonna end up with two times pi. We'll write this out as cosine pi over one plus e sine of pi. Now cosine of pi, that's just gonna be minus one. Sine of pi is actually gonna be zero. So we can simplify this, take the minus sign up front, we end up with minus two pi over one plus e to the zero, that's just one. One plus one, that's just two. We can cancel that two with this two. And so for the final solution of this, we just get minus pi. Okay, there you have it. Interesting problem from UNSW 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.